morning, everybody. Morning. You may have brought a uh, new book. If not, there's some scattered around, and we can kind of sanitize those ones that are here. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to turn in the hymn book to number 415, 415, and we'll do three verses at the beginning. <coughs> scripture readings and uh, heard from Kelly and uh, begun with our prayer. Let's pray the words that are so powerful when we call upon God both as individuals for our faults and as communities even as nations. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive any sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The church's great hymn of praise to the Trinity is just inside your missile light cover. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
and glorify you, and give you thanks to your great glory, the Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. O Jesus Christ, Holy God, Son, O God, O God, Son of the Father, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, which is our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, of mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now let us pray. <clears throat> Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love one another in truth of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let's be seated for the reading. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me that the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of our God, the Lord our God, nor see this great fire and more lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle, that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. <clears throat> if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of his salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you hear his voice, voice heart in our hearts. hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he got us. If today you hear his voice, heart in our hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now may the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, and I may worthily proclaim this gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to the Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. People were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes they were used to. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed the man, and with a loud cry it came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? New teaching of authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Jesus' fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Pretty fascinating scene there in the Gospel, but you know, one of the things that's especially interesting is where it comes in Mark's Gospel. When you I don't know about you, but when, when I look at the gospel, I tend to go right to the words, and I don't always pay attention to the chapter and verse. But that is from chapter 1, verse 21 to 28. In other words, there's only 20 verses of Mark's gospel prior to that. Now, you've heard me say that Mark's gospel is the shortest of all. You've also heard me say that it starts when Jesus is in his adulthood. But we are, of course, still in that period of time that we began with the baptism of the Lord, Jesus accepting his call and then calling others. We saw him call the apostles, some of them last week, and now he's going on about his ministry, including this episode in the uh, synagogue in Capernaum. <clears throat> but uh, so you can learn a lot about the gospel just from looking at, uh, at, at where it is. It's, it's just very beginning. And Jesus is in his adult, uh, uh, adult period, his ministry period already. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to jump away from that and flash back to 1953. Whoa, what's so special about 1953? Well, Callie, that's when I began parochial school. I was a first grader in 1953. <laughs> Look it up in the history books. 1953, a long time ago. And I say it because I know there are other folks uh, in church today who also would have been in parochial schools. And the interesting thing about 1953 is there wasn't a whole lot of recruiting for parochial schools. Now we do that today. You drive through Louisville and you'll see billboards saying open enrollment, Sacred Heart Academy, open enrollment. Registration day, come and see, look, at Trinity High School, St. X High School, and so on. And we have Kelly as the ambassador coming to tell us about her experience at St. James. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm getting at, of course, in our experience, people my age and not too much younger, is that it was an expectation that you went to parochial schools. In fact, in 1953, it was still um, an, understand, I mean, an understood rule in dioceses throughout the United States that if you did not have your children in a parochial school, then you needed a letter from your bishop. So it was to be expected that you'd be in a parochial school. 900 students, Kelly, <coughs> in my parochial school in eight grades. No kindergarten, no pre-K, no after-school care. Grade one through eight, 900 students. And I think you have three, four sisters? Hold up your fingers. Three sisters. We had 22. <laughs> it's a different world. <clears throat> and so I just give that as a little bit of background to this promotional week 
of Catholic Schools Week that happens every year. And uh, again, it's something that we would not have done in the past, but have been doing now for uh, probably 10 or 12 years. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you Miss Callie Peak. Come on up, my dear. Tell us about your experience. I'm going to get this lectionary out of your way. And then the pulpit is yours. St. James School. I have been at St. James since I was in three-year-old preschool. I am proud to be a student at St. James School because we have many opportunities that other schools may not have. For example, one opportunity students have is getting to be a part of the outdoor classroom, which includes helping with our new sheep, gardening, and seeking of the cross. I especially enjoy brushing and walking the sheep. Something that really excites me every day is our specialty classes. We have art, music, PE, and Spanish. These are great opportunities that other schools may not offer, especially another language. St. James has had an impact on me because I have learned how to be more like Christ through my teachers and being able to attend Mass every Wednesday at school. It also helps being able to see our priests and sisters around the school often. We also have great teachers at St. James. My teachers continue to challenge me to be the best student I can be every day. They always help me to understand difficult subjects. Many people in my family have attended St. James School, including my three siblings, my dad, my grandfather, and his siblings. My mom, my aunt, and my grandmother have all worked for St. James School. So when I go to St. James, I still feel like I'm with family even though I'm at school. St. James also offers several sports and activities such as my favorites, archery and old ensemble. St. James is a great school and we hope you'll think so too. Anyone who would like to come check out the school is invited to come take a tour. At the end of Mass, I will be in the back of the church if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. You're Kelly, I sit behind the speaker, so I might have missed this, but did you say you tend sheep at school? <laughs> no kidding. Tell you what, that's different than inner city Louisville, for sure. <laughs> okay, well, thanks. And uh, at the very end, she said that she'd be back there by the baptismal font. I turned the light on back there, and she's going to precede me out after communion so that she's back there in case you want to tell her how good her speech was ask her any questions. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the shift on St. Uh, Blaise is, again, what you would expect. As a matter of fact, it, it's um, the guidance that we got from the Archbishop is frankly taking a page out of the handbook, if you will, for military chaplains. Because, <clears throat> as you have heard me say many times before, a lot of times we did sacraments in a collective way. Our collective uh, sacrament of reconciliation that we do here came from my experience as a military chaplain. And the Feast of St. Blaise, our, our, our St. Blaise blessing is going to be in much the same way. Uh, by the way, he also, the Archbishop, sent guidance for Ash Wednesday, and that's only two weeks from this coming Wednesday. So the actual Feast of St. St. Blaise, sorry, Got me on the brain. <laughs> uh, the Feast of St. Blaise is Wednesday, and then two weeks after that is Ash Wednesday. Uh, and uh, the guidance for Ash Wednesday is again a no touch approach where I'm to take the blessed ashes and then sprinkle them over your head. So you might want to have a lot of hairspray on that day. <laughs> Actually, <clears throat> the priests who received the tantra always get theirs on their head, but I'll be doing just like that. But today, <clears throat> Brenda's gotten some long candles out, and I'll extend them up here. You know the tradition. We've been doing it for generations. St. Blaise was an early bishop, and as you've heard me say many times before, <clears throat> from about the year 30, when Jesus died on the cross, for nearly 
the next three centuries, all the way up to the year 313. Anybody who professed faith in Christ would be subject to death by the law of the empire. Callie had gotten up in a public sphere and said she's drawn closer to Christ through her education. She and her family would be thrown to the lions or martyred in some way. And so St. Blaise, as a bishop, gathering people together in secret all right, but he had a target on his back and he was martyred. Tradition goes, though, that he helped to dislodge some obstruction from the throat of a child whose airway was blocked. And I guess it was the fourth century Heimlich maneuver. At any rate, um, that's where we get our tradition. And you know the phrase, to the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may the Lord free you from any ailment of the throat and any other disorder. Well, we certainly got plenty of other disorders these days, don't we? So we can direct our thoughts and reflections to uh, in the healing, you know, and the mitigation of all the illness that we have in our community, in our nation, in our world. Let's stand up. One more word about the introduction. You noticed I said that St. James was a bishop, and so the red, of course, symbolizes his martyrdom. The stole symbolizes his role as a priest, which is one who offers sacrifice. And St. Peter himself tells us that we are all a part of the priesthood of Jesus because we make an offering of ourselves. Renewing our faith in Christ and renewing our commitment made in our baptisms and confirmations to give of ourselves an invitation of Jesus, we pray. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may the Lord free us from any ailment of the throat and any other disorder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's be seated again, and you know that the next words you'll hear will be the words of Jesus at the Last Supper. <laughs> Veruka Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, forever. Veruka Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, through the vine work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God, forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the offering which we present to you with humble and contrite hearts. Now pray, everybody, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of his holy church. Amen. <clears throat> and Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, and eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of Mary. By the suffering of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. Now with all the angels and saints, we join the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, who are found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts. Gifts in our homes, the gifts in the walk, the gifts in the pews, the gifts in the sanctuary, the gifts on the altar. By sending down your Holy Spirit upon us like the dew fall, that we may become what we eat, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, living in our world today. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his suffering, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Now, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation that Jesus taught us to offer, giving thanks that you yourself have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister with you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, prayer to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis the First, our Pope, Benedict the Sixteenth, our Pope Emeritus, Joseph Church, our Archbishop, <coughs> and all the intentions of the people of our parishes of St. Ambrose, of St. Ignatius, and St. Clair. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband Joseph, the Apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, would now may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus. For it is through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's continue our prayer in the words that Jesus, the great teacher, gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. And that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. So, Jesus, you said to your apostles, the peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, if not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with each of you today and all. Amen. 
there's the spirit. And let's greet each other safely in the peace of Christ. <laughs> John the Baptist said it in Galilee, we say it in Sicilia, here is the Lamb of God, Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to take you should under my roof. I only say the word that my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe to eternal life. Amen. Amen.
take our seats and put in the words for the melody that Sharon was just playing for. You'll find it in the Missalette at number 132. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Beginning at verse 4. 